An outdoors experience is naturally enhanced if you are accompanied by an expert who can guide your observation, interpret and enrich the experience. You are sure to know someone from within your school, among the parents or even from the community who could help you learn much more. Here are some glimpses of an afternoon spent with Professor H.Y. Mohan Ram, a botanist with a difference. One of the easiest things a teacher can do to inspire children to take interest in their environment is to talk about plants. There is an advantage in talking about plants because plants don't run away. They are there because they are fixed to this soil. Unlike animals, they don't shy away from stresses and strains. Here is a grass which is probably the most common plant in India. There is another grass which is a gigantic grass. For example, how many of us know this plant, the cycus, which dates back to the days of the dinosaurs? This plant is called the living fossil because it is older than the dinosaur and it's still living. This plant does not bear fruits but bears seeds. We hardly ever stop to think about trees and plants that we commonly see around us. This tall tree that you see here is called the drum stick tree, sojna or saragwa as you call in Gujarati. It has got fern like leaves and long fruits. The fruits are used as vegetable, the wood is used for making chopsticks and the leaves are also fed to cattle as fodder. Most interestingly, if you take the seeds, crush them and put them in turbid water, the water becomes clear and also portable because the seeds contain a substance which will inactivate the bacteria. I am standing next to a small neem plant, but you would see this plant almost everywhere in India, grown in homes and in avenues and in parks and other places. Uh, this tree has several uses, not one or five, but maybe more than twenty. Very recently, they have discovered that this plant contains a compound called azadirectin and they have produced what is called a biopesticide. It is not harmful at all to other organisms. Teachers must also emphasize the importance of plants as sources of important medicines and drugs. Today you can go and buy from a drug store any prescribed or non-prescribed medicines, but most of them have had their origin in some wild plants. Now this plant that you see here is called Bhumya Malaki in Sanskrit or Amli in Gujarati. It's a lowly weed, probably you just trample on this. But do you know how important it is? This plant had been used since time immemorial for liver disorders. All that you have to do is to take this plant and crush it and chew some leaves, especially if you have jaundice. These were some examples of how much there is to learn from and about plants around us. The first lesson is that there is a big difference between seeing and observing. Professor Mohan Ram demonstrates this effectively. Now here is a very interesting situation. There are two plants. The plant bearing white flowers is Chandani. And there is a tender, sensitive, delicate plant which is a member of the cucurbit family. Opposite the leaves you see a long thread-like structure. And as soon as this comes in contact with a plant on which it grows, it will form a spring-like coil and this spring goes in the clockwise direction in the beginning and then in the anti-clockwise direction. As the plant is too weak to stand by itself, it takes the support of another plant and hangs on to it. Having an expert to guide us is an ideal situation. 
However, this may not always be possible. We as teachers can add that little spark of exploration and discovery. The important thing here is not so much to know every name and detail, but in creating that desire to learn.